Yes, hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is the Clarets Daily News here on Turfcast and it's a busy one today so we've got a lot to fit in. The club have been busy with official announcements and obviously we'll start as usual with the incomings and the club have confirmed the signing of goalkeeper Etienne Green from St Etienne. Now we spoke about him a couple of days ago on the show so we kind of knew that it was happening but the club have now confirmed it he's joined us on what i believe is a three-year deal uh, the 24 year old arrives for an undisclosed fee and has put pen to paper over a three-year deal at turf Moor. yeah uh, like i said undisclosed fee that's always the case isn't it but transfer market so always there or thereabouts but don't take it as gospel have the move down as 700,000 euros, which is what, 500k? So no risk kind of signing. I would suspect he's here to be number two at the minute behind Hladke and eventually, obviously Trafford's still here, I'm aware of that, but I suspect that he will leave. Uh, so number two, I would suspect behind Hladke at the minute. And then when Trafford leaves, I still suspect that we will bring another goalkeeper in. If you didn't see the show a couple of days ago where we spoke about him, I know with a, a name like Etienne Green, you might think he's, he's French, he's not, he's English, he was born in Colchester, one of his parents was English and one of his parents was French and then obviously he got the move uh, over to Etienne Green when he was uh, in the under-19s uh, according to this. So yeah, he's been out in France for a while but he is English, did play for England under-21s um, but I would suspect that he's going to be kind of like your you barely peacock foul over the last couple of years where you don't really see much of him but we'll see because obviously I'm not entirely sure. Elsewhere, the club have also confirmed a couple of outgoings. Don't panic. It's not Sander Burge or Dara O'Shea yet. We'll get onto that in a minute. But them two, as I am recording this, are still Burnley players. But a couple of outgoings. First of all, Burnley have confirmed that Darko Cherlinov has departed on loan. He has gone to Poland in, uh, for a team whose name I'm not even going to try and pronounce, but they were the Polish champions last season. Uh, and he's joined them on a full season long loan. I know, like I said, I mentioned this story a couple of days ago, but it has just been confirmed now. But I'll repeat what I said a couple of days ago. I do feel that Darko didn't get enough chances, but at the same time, I kind of agree. It, it is probably not good enough for what we want to achieve and, and for what we want to be. And he's definitely not good enough for if we achieve that and get promotion. I don't think he's good enough for the Premier League. Uh, and elsewhere, Samuel Bastien has also left the club. The difference with this one is it is a permanent move. So Samuel Bastien has departed Turf Moor and we will not be seeing him in a Burnley shirt again. The club website have said Burnley Football Club can confirm the departure of midfielder Samuel Bastien, who has joined Eredivisie side for Tuna Sittard in a permanent move for an undisclosed fee. Now, this has literally just been announced. I'm recording this at quarter past 12 on Thursday afternoon. The club announced it at 12. So there is no fee on the Transfer Market website just yet. So it will remain undisclosed for now. But when I find it out, I'll obviously relay the information to you guys on tomorrow's show, if I remember. But for now, it's an undisclosed fee. But yeah, Darko Cherlinov and Samuel Bastien have left the club with Bastien leaving on a permanent basis. We spoke a couple of days ago about Manchester United's interest in Norwegian midfielder Sander Burge and it has continued. There's been quite a lot of reports about this one. Now it's starting to gather some pace. I've seen some reports saying that Sander Burge would be open to the move to Manchester United. Well, of course he would. It's Manchester United. He's not going to say no, is he? So I, I, I didn't really post that one because I thought, well, obviously. But according to Sky Sports, Manchester United have now held initial talks with Burnley. Obviously, we said a couple of days ago that they had spoken to Sander Bird's representatives. So obviously, the progression of that is to then talk to Burnley, which seems to be the way that things are done these days. I know a lot of people always seem to comment how come they've done it through the player first rather than the club? Aren't you supposed to talk to the club first? I think as long as you talk to the agent, I don't know, I'm just guessing here. I think as long as you talk to the agent and do it that way, it's probably a loophole. Every single deal seems to be done via the agents first these days. But yeah, I only ever seem to see Burnley fans saying, well, that's a disgrace. You don't get them done for tapping up. I don't think I don't think that's a thing anymore, if I'm being honest with you. But according to Sky Sports, Man, Sky Sports, sorry, Manchester United have held initial talks with Burnley over the transfer of Sander Burns. United are also looking at other midfielders, though. So I've seen other reports as well. I think this was in the Sun. I tend to not use the Sun, obviously, because of the history and that. But I did see that they had reported 
that we were asking for 30 million quid minimum. And if that is the case, then hats off to Alan Pace and the club. I would suspect the club will end up lowering that valuation a little bit and probably meet for 25. I think if United offered 25, I think we'd accept it. And I think we'd be silly not to, especially if the player does want the move. And I can't begrudge him that. Like He's, he's clearly been training. We've seen him all the training videos and stuff. So it's not like he's not turned up to training like some or he's pushing for a move. I believe his agent is very busy. So it's a case of... Yeah, Manchester United are here, and 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 if and if a club like Manchester United comes knocking, even though they aren't as good as they used to, then you're going to open the door. I know I mentioned a couple of uh, on the show a couple of days ago about some of their fans having a bit of a paddy and kind of hoping that would put him off. Obviously, it was never going to. It was just it was just false hope from me. But yeah, Manchester United it looks like they've stepped up their interest now after talking to Sander Burgess representatives a couple of days ago. They have now moved on to Burnley. So you would suspect that the two clubs will be talking about valuation and stuff now. And United will probably say something like twenty. Burnley say, "Hold on, we want 30. And then I would suspect, like I said, that that we meet in the middle. I would hope so. Anyway, according to transfer market, he is the most valuable player in the championship, and I can see why he's is easily easily good enough to be in the Premier League I'm surprised Man United want him for a, for, for what they want to achieve he'll be good backup I guess so it, there is that does he want to go and sit on a bench I mean that's up to him again it, it's Manchester United but I guess we'll have to see if they offer 25 million I would suspect that we take it and I've seen other reports as well that he would be more than doubling his wage and getting around 100 grand a week so you can't really say no if you stand the bird, can you? But fingers crossed, like I said, in that report, United are also looking at other midfielders as like contingency plans. I think they're looking at like three or four and, and they'll just end up seeing which is the best value for money, I guess, out of them out of them four. So yeah, interesting. Fingers crossed it doesn't develop too much more than this, but I believe other clubs are looking at, at him as well. And to be honest, like I said, a two, three weeks ago now, I am resigned to losing Sander because I think he's good enough to play in the Premier League. Another big player that could be leaving the club, or at least there's reports, there's no concrete evidence of anything yet that these are definitely happening, but there are reports and more noise surrounding Dara O'Shea. There's no smoke without firing. There seems to be a lot of smoke now regarding Dara O'Shea. But this one comes from Belgian journalist Sasha Tovalera. And he says Ipswich are now working hard on a deal to take the Irish centre-back to Portman Road. Apparently, talks are ongoing between all parties about that one. However, this does conflict to report. I saw a couple of days ago, I think maybe on, on Tuesday night or Wednesday, I can't remember exactly when it was, that Ipswich had shown an interest, but he doesn't want to go to Ipswich. He'd already turned them down and his preferred move, if he is going to move, is Brentford, which I find interesting. I actually, Ipswich are a bigger club than Brentford. They've obviously got European pedigree and stuff like that. They've been out of the top flight for quite a while. I think the only difference with Brentford that I would have over Ipswich is they're in London and maybe he wants to live in London and they're probably more likely to stay up, to be fair. It could be something to do with that, but it's interesting. But yeah, according to Belgian journalist Sasha Tovalera, Dora O'Shea is in talks with Ipswich Town. So that's interesting. Like I said, it does conflict a couple of reports from uh, a couple of days ago, so we'll see. But what I think now with the Dara situation is that it's looking like he... There's a lot, not not that he'll move because we, we might end up saying no to it or whatever. But I think, again, if he wants to move, which if the reports are true about him wanting to go to Brentford, oh, then maybe he wants to go. So it's interesting. I do, I do want to quickly go back a couple of days as well, because on August the 6th, I know it's the 8th now, but I didn't actually do one on the 7th because I was working on the pregame show. Brentford, apparently, according to Graham Smith, who is a journalist who I can't remember who he works for now. Uh, sorry, Graham Bailey. Um, I can't remember who he works for. I'll just quickly get up on my screen. Um, I'm not sure, actually. I'm not sure. Uh, HRTC, that's the one. He's not the best. Let's just say this. He's not the best. I, I find that he gets a lot of stuff wrong with Burnley. And he did say a couple of days ago that Brentford had made a second bid for Dora O'Shea with the London club having a confidence that they can get the deal done. So Ipswich are looking at him. Apparently, he's already rejected that though. But according to Sasha, they're still working on it. So maybe he's not. And Brentford are looking at him. But according to Graham Bailey, there have been two bids made. But I spoke to somebody at the club 
last night, late last night, he said at that point there hadn't been a bid made at that point. So I don't know where he gets his second bid from. Another thing as well with the Graham Bailey article, he did put in the article about it being £7 million rated. Brentford made bid for £7 million rated defender is what it said. Everybody took that, including myself, as they'd made a £7 million bid. In my opinion, that's written horrifically. And of course, people are going to take it. People then ran with it, including sort of like big news agencies like, you know, newspapers, sorry, like the Mail and stuff like that. So there's a lot of stuff out there about Brentford bidding £7 million. They haven't. As far as I'm aware, they haven't even made a bid. They may have now, since now, obviously this was last night, they may have made a bid since then, but it wasn't £7 million. And even if it was, hopefully Alan Pace or whoever's in charge of that sort of thing just laughed and put the phone down because there is no way in hell that we're going to sell him for pretty much the same as what we bought him for. I think 15 million quid does it. If we double our money on him and a little bit more, then I think I think that does it. I, th I, th I think we're selling for that sort of price. But yeah, interesting. A lot of noise surrounding Dara. I'm quite worried now. And when I saw the Brentford stuff coming out a couple of days ago, I was thinking, ah, surely not, surely not. This must just be lazy links. But like I said, no smoke without fire. And with two clubs looking at him, I wouldn't mind a bidding war if, if that's going to happen, um, then it's going to be interesting. But yeah, I think from what I can gather, and again, this is just my opinion, this is no ITK knowledge of anything, I think we're going to end up losing both of them, which would be a big shame. I will start wrapping it up here, but before I do, just a couple of things. Obviously, you may have seen the club tweet a teaser yesterday for the new kit. As I'm recording this, it hasn't been out. It hasn't come out. Uh, they've literally, as I'm saying this to you now, that's why I end up tripping over my words then, just tweeted that picture. The new kit is going to be released today, Thursday, at 5 p.m. And that's the picture. We knew it was white. We knew, it, well, we thought from the picture that they tweeted yesterday that it would have claret and blue trim. It got a lot of people thinking that maybe, that's the picture, it got a lot of people thinking that maybe the, the shirt was sort of like mainly blue with, with claret. But no, I seem to remember, and I say in a couple of short, uh, this is a couple of weeks ago, I think now, when the Bristol Street Motor sponsorship came out, they kind of leaked all the colours, didn't they? When the, the CEO of Bristol Street Motors had like the colours. I don't know if you saw it. I think I showed, I think I showed it on, 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 on this show. Um, but it's looking like it's white with claret and blue trim. And I love that. That has got me excited i do like that that looks like it could be a good shirt so yeah we'll have more on the new shirt on tomorrow's show we're we'll talking about that and hopefully some more things surrounding some positive stuff and hopefully maybe man united drop out of the sander Burge race and and dara o'shea comes out and says no i want to stay at burnley so we'll see but yeah fingers crossed also i know this is called the clarets daily news you may have noticed yesterday i didn't do a show this is probably the way it's going to be from now on because obviously the season's starting. Yesterday I didn't do the show because I was working on the Luton pre-game show which will be dropping tonight for non-members at 6 o'clock on the YouTube and of course on all your usual podcast platforms. So when we're doing the pre-game shows and the full-time shows and sort of like fan reactions, I obviously won't have time to also do a Claret's Daily News as well. So... It, it, even though it's called Claret's Daily News, I might be doing it like three times a week. But yeah, the, the aim of this show is to always keep the channel ticking along and to always keep everyone updated. And we'll see what happens with the Claret's Daily News show when the transfer window shuts because there might not be that much news to talk about. So I might have to literally retire it until the January transfer window opens. I'll just, I'll just see how we get on in the first couple of weeks of September. But yeah, the Claret's Daily News is more than likely now to be basically when there's not much going on in terms of matches and stuff and, uh, and other content being made for the channel. Like I said, the aim of the show was to, to keep the channel ticking along and to kind of have a show coming out every single day on the channel. Hence why I didn't do it at the weekends. I was kind of leaving a gap for sort of like the, the full-time content and stuff like that. But then I weren't thinking about the pre-game show. So yeah, basically... It'll be on when it's on. And when stuff happens, then again, I'll always update you as well as I can. But yeah, thank you for watching. Thank you everyone for listening on the podcast. And I will definitely be back tomorrow with more talk about the new kit, which looks absolutely lovely. I hope it does not disappoint. <laughs>